Hey guys, MVC here for the ScanPro Gaming tab for another video review. This time we're going to be taking a look at the BenQ XL2430 T8 144Hz 24-inch gaming monitor, recently announced as well as the MLG tournament monitor for their circuit in 2015. So I've been very excited to get my hands on this. I actually picked it up myself with my own money for about £285 at the time of review. It's definitely on the steeper end, particularly when you consider it doesn't have G-Sync and free sync something we'll get into later on as to whether that's a bad thing or not and comes as well with a shrew of additional features black equalizer color vibrance motion blur reduction from benq does not feature however 3d vision 2 technology that seems to be a tech that is now discontinued by nvidia they're instead pushing the whole g-sync side of things as well as ulmb and as a result does not feature light boost but again does have this motion blur reduction tech now what we're going to be doing is starting off with a quick overview of the monitor have a look at the features we've got here plus the on-screen display then have a look at in-game performance and my thoughts on that before coming back right at the end with my final thoughts, feelings and conclusions as to whether it's worth the £285 at the time of review price tag. Now if you're looking for colour accuracy and all that kind of detail, you're going to be wanting to check out a fully fledged website based review somewhere else. We're strictly looking at this from a competitive gamer, pro gamer perspective and whether it's something you should consider if you're looking to try and win various tournaments, particularly in the FPS area the first person shooter area so yeah i hope you enjoy the video and we'll catch you at the end for my final thoughts the BenQ XL 2430T is a high refresh rate 1080p 144Hz gaming monitor featuring a 1 millisecond TN panel with support for up to 16.7 million colors through 6-bit FRC. We have a variety of connections here. We've got DualLink DVI, DisplayPort 1.2, two HDMI 1.4s, a VGA port, a 3.5mm audio import but no speakers. However, output to a headphone jack, a microphone jack and two USB 3 connections on the left hand side which can be activated through the use of a USB cable directly into the back of your motherboard. And finally an input for our S switch that sits nicely in the base should you want to use it. Now whilst we haven't got the inclusion of NVIDIA 3D technology to here like previous screens, we do have BenQ's proprietary blur reduction feature as well as colour vibrance, black equaliser and everything else we've come to expect from BenQ. But what really separates this monitor from the previous range is its new stand. It's made entirely of aluminium alloy and has red notches along the height adjust and the rotation allowing you to set your desired position so if you do travel to an event you can always make sure you get it back to how you like it either when you get there or return home afterwards. But in terms of the stand I do really like it and I'm curious as to why they've not used this stand on the upcoming G-Sync monitors because that reduced depth for me using my keyboard at a slight angle means it never really gets in the way and it's definitely a welcomed improvement to the monitor. So without further ado let's have a look at the on-screen display and display pivot software that comes bundled allowing you to customize the monitor via your desktop. So straight off the bat let's go into the OSD and show you what feature set you're getting here for your money, the things you can mess around with and how they cross link into display pivot, the software you can install to your system and potentially make your life easier. So Straight off the bat, you can see I've customized the top three. We've added blur reduction, black equalizer, and low blue light. You can customize these top three keys if you want. These are the three that I choose to use most often. Low blue light is a flux alternative, tones down the whites, adds a bit of a yellowy tone to them. Black equalizer lightens up those dark areas so you can see easier. Particularly useful in zombie games and games like Counter-Strike in those dark corridors. And blur reduction which inserts black frames or refreshes the screen introducing flicker to remove all ghosting at the cost of slightly increased latency. But the only thing I did change out of the box is to go into picture and I changed the picture mode from FPS 1 which was a little bit washed out taking advantage of black equalizer and I dropped it down to standard. And that's really the only thing I changed. Once you've did that you have to go into game settings and down to instant mode and turn this on as standard by default has instant mode turn off. But anyway, back into picture, we've got brightness at 100, contrast at 50, sharpness at 6, I increased that from 5, gamma at 3, some people might like to lower that, and again, I'm not calibrating it using a spider 4 or anything like that, I'm just going off feeling and calibrating it close to my Iyama screen next to me, so they both look about even. Now, colour temperature I've got set to use a define with full RGB, I've got 100, 100, 100. AMA, we've got off, high and premium, this is our ghosting when we're not using 
BenQ blur reduction. AMA of off is your slowest response time. In other words, about five milliseconds, quite a lot of trailing there. Premium is our fastest response time, however, does introduce heavy overdrive trailing or overdrive artifacts, inverse color trailing, so to speak. You can see that on the screen now from fast shutter spot shots taken at blurbusters.com. And high is our in-between value. Again, a little bit on the strong end for my taste. However, I'd rather have some overdrive trailing than no overdrive trailing. But on top of that, if we go back in here, we also have dynamic contrast. I currently got that set to zero and reset color if you want to. Now, down in display, we've got our inputs, our DVI, our display port, our two HDMIs and D sub. And we've also got display mode, which I've unfortunately not been able to get to work. I don't know if this is because I'm using display port 1.2 or something else, but I can only ever use full. Either way, we've got aspect one to one and a variety of different resolutions and aspect ratios. If you play something like Counter Strike in a lower resolution, that could be useful if like I say, you can get it to work. And we've also got smart scaling, HDMI, RGB, PC range, overscan and geometry, depending on the input and resolutions you're using. They will become available. Now down in system, we've got headphone if you take advantage of the 3.5 audio in, or if you are connecting through HDMI or DisplayPort 1.2. We've got our OSD setting here, language, display time, and OSD clock. We've got custom key one, two, and three, which I have set. Again, the convenience factor with this monitor is huge. I really love the fact that you can set up these custom keys to things like that. It is a huge benefit because I constantly change the amount of black equalizer I've got depending on the map. Uh, information, gives you all our information here on the monitor and what's currently running. Other setting, resolution notice, buzzer, Kind of neat, actually. Um, I don't use it for the purpose of this video, but usually I do. Input audio switch, don't use that. Auto pivot sensor, great in combination with display pivot software. It will automatically detect when you've turned it 90 degrees and swap the resolution on itself. Uh, we've got auto power off, LED indicator, and that as well. And finally, the main crunch of things, which is going to be game settings. Here we got blur reduction, black equalizer, color vibrance, low blue light, instant mode, auto game mode, and save settings. Now let's start off with motion blur reduction. Essentially, BenQ removed 3D Vision 2 technology and implemented their own blur reduction into this monitor. You're forced to use this if you want to use it, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It works really well. Essentially introduces flicker back onto the screen. So what is otherwise a flicker-free monitor suddenly doesn't become so once you enable the setting, but as a result, we'll insert frames, black frames to remove ghosting. And when this happens, you do get at the cost of increased latency. Now, personally, I find it to be very useful playing Dirty Bomb when people are spamming, jump and crouch and I'm tracking them with my crosshair. It really did make life easier. And I personally thought the benefit outweighed the cost of the increased latency. However, in every other game I've played, and that is a hell of a lot, be it single player or multiplayer like Counter-Strike Global Offensive or Quake 3, I always use blur reduction disabled because the increased latency can be felt there. For some reason in Dirty Bomb, it just really made sense to use it. Now, moving down, Black Equalizer, the best thing for me to do here is to jump into Counter-Strike Global Offensive and demonstrate it. Now, the Black Equalizer can be a fantastic asset, particularly when it can be bound to a custom key on the front of the screen, like on the 30T, allowing you to change it on the fly depending on the map you're playing and situation you're in. I really do feel like it's a great thing. And here on the back of DE Inferno, ticking it up from zero to one, straight away you can see a huge difference, able to see in that corner. And obviously going all the way up to 20 starts to make the rest of the screen look washed out a little bit too much. But the point is you can customize it to your liking. And here is well as a screenshot of H1Z1, the brand new zombie game from Sony Online Entertainment, showing you what it can look like there. So we're going to leave the black EQ at 1, which is what I use for CS, and jump into Color Vibrance. Now, I actually use Digital Vibrance in my NVIDIA control panel, increasing it by 20%. However, using the picture mode of standard here on the XL2430T, we get a pink flash when we go plus 1 and minus 1. And whilst going to minus 10 or 0, effectively, uh, it does make things grayscale. And going plus 10 will make things pop, almost like looking at an OLED display. Everything becomes much darker, almost as if the black equalizer is working in reverse and with that said the only way I found to fix it was to go into picture mode and set it to one of the default presets like FPS 1 which comes with black equalizer at 12 out of the box now if you were to drop black equalizer to 10 and adjust some of the other settings such as the colors you can get close to what you have 
out of the box with standard. However, I do find the black equalizer at that level does flash as you come in from dark to light areas. The monitor almost flickers about and it's not something I was prepared to play with. So I've actually default myself to using standard and ignoring color vibrance whatsoever. And I would definitely recommend you just use your graphics card alternative in the drivers. So instead I'm using that low blue light filter for my third custom key and I actually find it looks great. It tones down those whites makes things a little bit more yellow easy on the eyes late at night and it's a great feature to have rather than installing flux which can have a negative effect in game whereas this will not we've also got auto game mode which is going to take advantage of the various profiles that you can download to usb and again pre-save onto your desktop that will automatically load depending on the game you launch you have to have display pivot installed to take advantage of this setting and finally save setting which you can save to gamer one two or three but yeah with that said let's have a quick jump into some gameplay and my thoughts on how it performed in testing so this video is getting quite long now so let's make the actual gameplay segment funnily enough the shortest part because i've been playing with the monitor for about two weeks now and i gotta say almost flawless experience with the monitor yes i would still like a couple of extra overdrive settings to go alongside high and premium as it is quite aggressive but after about 10 to 15 minutes like on the original 11t that i reviewed i quickly forgot about it and actually you get a very sharp image with motion blur disabled over some of the other monitors on the market as a result and to be honest with instant mode enabled therefore input lag being at its lowest i had no trouble in any game aiming at people tracking them in quake 3 arena hitting headshots as they peeked out from doors it is a fantastic gaming monitor and i'm confident that all of the counter strike players at the mlgx games event must have found good home playing on that screen however the question you need to ask is do you want g-sync because this is the only area of the monitor that it's let down by is the lack of that technology g-sync will remove tearing tearing of course more present at the lower frame rate so more single player and casual games where you cannot hold 120 to 144 fps at all times then g-sync is something to look into but in terms of competitive games like counter strike like league of legends where you're holding ridiculously high frame rates already Paying the extra for G-Sync is not really a necessity and it's not something that I'm personally invested in is G-Sync, but it's something I'd pick up at the right price. So it all depends. If you can get a good budget G-Sync monitor with all the features of this screen, sure, pick it up. But if you can't, do you necessarily need it? And that's kind of what the gameplay segment is because aside from that, it was a fantastic experience playing on the XL2430. So final thoughts for the XL2430, I absolutely adore this monitor, there's very little I dislike about it, in fact the only thing I do dislike is it hasn't got G-Sync and ULMB, it does have BenQ's blur reduction, which is great by the way, but you get ULMB with G-Sync, so for those of you that play casually and you want that, particularly at the £285 to £300 price point, you can definitely get a good budget monitor that's going to do the job. Whereas if you're looking at the BenQ G-Sync monitor with the older stand, you're going to be spending well over the price of this screen at today's price point, which is the end of January, pretty much. So yeah, in terms of this monitor at £285, you're getting a fantastic feature set. And I think the main thing about this is convenience because currently right now I've set up the on-screen display to enable the front three buttons or three of five at least to do the blur reduction, enable toggle on and off, to toggle and set and customize the black equalizer and to adjust the color vibrance. So I've got easy access to everything, which is great because on a lot of other monitors on the market, you have to go through the on-screen display, like at least 15 button presses just to get to where you want to go. It's slightly exaggerated, in fact, a lot of exaggeration there but you get my point it's simply one button and then up and down and uh, you've got pretty much everything you could want to customize in game now again once you set it to the standard color preset it looks great i think the black levels are good um, there's i think only the view sonic vg2401 mh that has looked as good if not slightly better than the benq xl 2430t what i did kind of be disappointed with is the overdrive trailing as per usual with the BenQ it's very aggressive you've got three settings one of which is off and two of which is on one's way too aggressive and one's sort of like you're in between value I would still like to see BenQ add maybe another two along the way so you've got five total settings but again you'd rather have some overdrive 
than no overdrive and or some overdrive trailing rather because it's going to make the image sharper when you're not using blur reduction now in terms of blur reduction i actually found this really useful for dirty bomb where people are spamming jumping corridors crouching where you're really aiming for those heads and you've got fast moving objects it was useful and to be honest whilst i do feel the increased latency in other games like quake 3 and even counter strikes to some degree i really feel like the benefits of blur reduction outweighed the negative increase of input lag when it came to dirty bomb but again that was the only game i found it useful in for the rest of it it was useless and in terms of useless features color vibrance i rather use digital vibrance in the nvidia control panel to be honest you've got more control over it increments of one from 50 all the way up to 100 or to negative zero uh, to make it grayscale whereas on the screen you've only got 20 values you can choose from 10 positive 10 negative uh, so to speak but what is useful is the black equalizer. And again, like the LG screen also available on the market, because of the convenience of ease of access you've got, you can simply toggle it up and down whenever you like. You don't have to go through the on-screen display, which is actually a problem with a lot of other screens that feature similar technology, is the lack of ease of access. And particularly with the latest releases of zombie games like Dying Light, H1Z1, when it gets to nighttime and you want to get that extra competitive edge, maybe you can see something moving in the distance and you just want to have a quicker look without ruining the immersion all the time quickly toggle it on toggle it off and uh, you'll get a better view and to be honest it's a fantastic feature and i really think every monitor should implement it but uh, in terms of negatives, £285 is still very steep. And if you don't need some of these features, or if you don't need display port, you can pick up the 11Z, which comes in about £210 to £220, a saving of about 60 to 65 again at the time of review. And you're getting exactly the same feature set. You're getting NVIDIA 3D Technology 2, uh, which again, it has been discontinued, but you still get to use Light Boost or BenQ's Motion Blur Reduction Technology, providing you get firmware version 2 which is the superior one uh, for changing things in the Blurbusters website. But in terms of the feature set you get with the current blur reduction as well as the display pivot software, it is just a feature pack monitor and at £285 if you can afford it, there's very little you're going to dislike about it unless you're wanting G-Sync and FreeSync. Apart from that, I think it is a near perfect screen. Um, I guess the only thing I would like to see is thinner bezels from BenQ and more overdrive control again. But yeah, uh, please, if you want to win tournaments, this is definitely a screen to consider. And if you have any questions or comments about the screen or the review itself, just let me know in below and I will get back to you. But yeah, for now, we'll catch you next time here on the Scampro Gaming Tab. Take care.